Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video tutorials, we are learning Java, basic Java required for new automation testers or whoever trying to learn Java for the first time. So, just a small request to please subscribe my channel and help me to reach a thousand subscriber target. So, and uh, in this session, we are gonna talk about switch case. So, if you're going through all my videos one by one, uh, in some of the previous sessions like 26th and 25th uh, tutorial numbers we were talking about conditional statements and uh, in that we learned about if statement if else nested if else right and switch case is one of the conditional statement and switch case is a uh, pretty easy to understand and uh, it's gonna give you a very 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 much flexibility in terms of you know how to jump in your execution sequence or what you want to execute based on certain criteria so this is a flowchart in front of you i'm gonna explain the flowchart pretty quick and then we'll jump on the actual implementation so we'll actually write a switch case code and see how it works okay so as you see in the flowchart the the controller moves from uh, top to bottom right so there is something called as expression nothing but a decision making so expression is something like uh, if you go back to if statements right so inside if also we provide certain expression or we, we basically say certain conditions and based on that we either go inside if statement like if it's the output of that condition is true then we execute if statement or we go to else statement right in a exactly similar fashion in the switch case what we do here is we we look out the input which the user is uh, trying to execute so we have multiple cases in front of you so the cases are nothing but you know uh, different code blocks so different execution paths i can say so based on what user is providing an input to this switch case we're gonna turn on that path or we're gonna execute that execution uh, we're gonna execute that code block and break and the control is gonna come out so let's take an example you have three cars in front of you one is a toyota camry and there is a mercedes-benz and the last is a tesla you're my personal favorite okay so and you have some some called of number generator in front of you and based on what number comes in that number generator you're gonna pick the car so let's say if if the number generator gives you output as one you're gonna pick toyota camry and uh, go for your vacation and if it gives two you're gonna pick mercedes benz and if it comes three then you are lucky you are gonna pick the tesla and go for a vacation okay so based on what what number you get you're gonna pick that car and you carry your execution you know you don't you don't bother about the rest of the cars or you don't bother about the rest of the cases so let's say in a switch case you have case from one to hundred but you can execute or you will execute only one of the case and how you gonna decide which case you want to execute that will be based on the expression okay so we will see an example so that your doubts will be clear if there are any now let's take a uh, name uh, understanding so switch case so if you, if you see this diagram why i kept it over here to try to understand based on what switch you are uh, pressing right it's gonna turn on that functionality it's going to start executing that particular functionality which is associated with that switch right so if you if you click or if you press the first switch you're going to turn on the fan the second one only light and third one bulb the fourth one again another lamp so why why i'm uh, explaining you this is this is exactly the it works with the switch case syntax if you see the switch case syntax over here whatever the expression whatever the input this switch case statement is gonna receive from the user it's gonna jump on that particular case and only execute the code lines in that case and break and it's come out that's it okay so the switch case statement provides another way to decide which statement to execute next next okay if you if you're following my videos in a previous session we will learn about nested if else right so in that nested if else also we check the condition if it satisfies we execute the if statement or else we go to else then inside else we may have another if right and inside if we may have another if so on but instead of writing multiple if else statements if you if you know that if this is the output i want to execute this case if this is the output i want to execute this case better you implement switch case and not the if else i'll tell you the 
complexity or what is the advantage of using a switch case over a nested if else later on in this video but yes from the understanding perspective now you understand that if you have clear picture about what you need to execute based on the input the user is asking a user is providing you write a switch case rather than nested if else okay so let's jump to eclipse and try to see an example let's create another class we'll name that class as switch case we need main method okay so now in main method what i'm gonna do is anyway we are learning all the concepts one by way so let's why not implement them so this is the main method i'm gonna write on another method and we're gonna call this method from main method and this method is about to this method is all about implementing switch case okay so we'll like static uh, output will be string i'm gonna write uh, the month generator so if the user is providing one he'll get output as january if the user is providing 11 he's gonna get output as november and uh, the user is providing input as three he gonna say the output as march so it's pretty simple now so that's why the output is string then i'll say month or uh, as a decision maker or uh, I'm, I'm bad with uh, naming methods okay so and what will be an input input month right because it will be an int now inside this of course uh, we need to switch statement right so before that i'm gonna month string a month name i would say okay month name then let's say this is the syntax switch i'm gonna expect uh, whatever the user the month is gonna pass the same thing i'm gonna provide to switch and then open the bracket now inside this i'm gonna write all our cases okay so let's say case one if the input is one then because the input is int right so that's why whatever i'm gonna write if the input is one i'm gonna execute case one so you remember you give semicolon in a switch case this is how the syntax work okay so i'm gonna assign january and then it's very important to put this break keyword what this break will do is the break will avoid you to execute rest of the cases otherwise if you don't give a break we will see what happens it may execute another cases as well okay so let's say is to semicolon and we are assigning if the user is providing two we're gonna assign it as fib right and then one more time break keyword so java make sure that you know most of the keywords these are all self-defined keywords the break uh, the moment uh, the controller executes or encounters break it understands what it needs to do okay and similarly we can have all remaining cases like so i'm just copy pasting a couple of them so let's say case three case four and case five okay so case three let's say march april and may so the last one instead of five what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say default <laughs> so what it says So for default we don't need this so default means if the user is passing an input which doesn't match any of these cases it's gonna assign the value whatever is under default it's gonna execute a default case so here i will say invalid month 
please make sure you are providing an input from 1 to 12. This is just a message to a user if it try to provide an input which is you know apart from this range. Now so there is one more error and what is this let's hover your mouse so whenever you see such errors like you know the one which i got it right now when i wrote case default right so whenever you get an error you try to hover your mouse on that and read it and then sometimes sometimes you will click that oh okay this is this is what i did a mistake now let's see what's the error here what it says add return statement right because we want to return we get the return type as string but there is no return so that's why it is giving you error so here what we're gonna do is once it comes out from a switch case which is this you know it highlights over here after this I'm gonna write my return month name okay because whatever the value is going to assign to that, I just want to return that to the user. So we implemented a switch case inside a method, which is a decision maker, right? Now we're going to call that method from our main method. So let's say CSO, SYSO, control space, uh, just shortcut it to print it. So I'll say parent month, or I will say month from uh, from generator is plus I'm gonna use this method and pass an input so let's say I'm passing two as an input okay so this this what I'm doing is I'm calling the method inside the print statement itself and the output of this method is gonna be a string it's gonna concatenate and print it over here if this, if this is kind of difficult to you what you can do is you can you know string i'll say output i'm sorry output equal to decision maker to and you know take this output and then print it over here it's one and same either i do this way or i do that way okay the, the, the first one which we did is kind of uh, easy because it's it's avoiding the use of uh, uh, it's avoiding the use of string variable right so i'm gonna go back and uh, use the first way because yeah this is what i like now i'm gonna run this program so right click run as java application and see the month from generator is feb and from where this value came from this method so this method we called we gave input as two it came here and it executed this case which is case number two and it assigned the value as feb it returned it from here you know it returned this and this return came here the value of that return and then it concatenated in this print statement and that's why we see feb if i change this to four and save it run this program once again see the month generator is april right so let's say I give 40 save it run it i can also run it from here okay so just click on it see what it says month from generator is invalid month please make sure you are providing an input from 1 to 12 because the 40 there, there is no case number 40 that's why it executed default case and in this it assigned this string and that's why we are able to see this message right so this is a simple switch case but remember if you know how to implement and where to implement a switch case in your automation uh, scripts or in a general java development you're gonna save a lot of your execution time and uh, coming back to the question where we say you know the nested defaults versus switch case statement i personally prefer writing a switch case statements where i know what exactly i need to execute based on an input rather than going a nested defaults because the nested defaults gonna take a lot of time for execution and because it needs to check each and every condition and proceed further right but whereas in a switch case based on the output it's gonna directly jump to that particular case and it's gonna execute it so that's the biggest advantage of writing a switch case now another question in your mind maybe can we write a nested switch case uh, sorry 
The answer is yes, you can. So in case number two, if you want to write another switch case, yes, you can write that as well. You can write if statement inside case, you know, you can write whatever you want. So basically you can nest multiple things inside each other. You can write switch statement inside if statement. You can write if statement inside switch statement. Basically they are all individual components. The way you connect them, the way you want to use them, you can use them. So let's say here, if I want to use something called as if, I can use that if, let's say anything, I'm not giving any condition. I'm just saying, okay, if true, and then I'm gonna execute this, right? So, so I'm just, I'm just line. save this. So if I give here as two, save it, run it, See, it executed case number two, it executed my if statement. See, anyway, we have assigned it true, so it, it needs to execute. It printed that line, and then it also came back to our calling method, and it printed the <coughs> month as well, right? So basically, all these conditional statements, if, if else, and switch case. Uh, do a lot of practice and come up with questions. If you are facing any difficulties, uh, let me know. You can write in the comment section of this video, or uh, drop me an email. My email is uh, uh, provided in the description of this video. And yeah, uh, one more request, please subscribe if you wanna get notified about latest videos and uh, uh, let, uh, upcoming videos in this uh, playlist. Okay, thanks guys. See you in the next video. Bye.